Hey everybody, this is Tom from Rocket Restorations and today we have a very cool car with a even better story. Uh, as many of you know, I am a sea body guy. I love sea bodies and Furies are one of my favorite vehicles. And we had the opportunity to work on this one and I was super excited about it. Uh, Rocket actually worked on this one back in 2007. We did a buff job and a little mechanical stuff on it. But uh, fortunately the reason this came to us is not such a good story, but uh, we'll get into that. Let me just do a little background on the 1968 Plymouth Fury. So this was the first year of the what was called the fuselage styling. And these are just great looking cars. Like their Space Age, um, the 68 was very square looking and they call it the slab sides. And a little boring, it was kind of Elwood Ingalls, you know, kind of make up from the, from the forward look stuff. And there's very plain looking. And this year they went to the fuselage styling and it was all new. And these cars are just, they're very pretty cars. They're they're very well put together. Um, they're really nice looking. I mean, personally, I prefer the 70 Fury a little bit over the 69, but I've had a lot of 69s over the years. I've had uh, Washington State Patrol cars and um, four doors and two doors and convertibles and there's really cool cars. And this one's a Sport Fury, so it's top of the line and, you know, good looking car. I love the pale yellow. It's a very, you know, late 60s, early 70s color, you know, black top with a white interior. It just really sets it off. And I love the original plates on it too, which are, I believe, are original to the car. Uh, Sport Fury was the top of the line. So you got the red, white, and blue plaque on the quarter panel, the, the special Sport Fury hubcaps. They came standard with bucket seats. And this one's optioned up with a console. You know, white back seat, power top, that was standard. Little car seat lights in the back. Another kind of neat thing on sea bodies was they still had vent windows this year. But there's actually a separate crank handle for the vent window and it was smaller than the, the window crank. Um, and they're unique to the sea bodies. They use these from 69 to 73. Uh, that was kind of the fuselage styling year, 69 to 73. 73 was the last year for that. Um, you know, has a Sport Fury badge on the side. Uh, excuse the car for being a little bit dirty. I'll get into that in a little bit here on what that's going on. Uh, this one's optioned up with an 8-track, and it is a factory big block car. The Sport Fury has a unique grille. It's actually a plastic insert in there. It's not aluminum. It's a plastic insert with aluminum outside. And again, the red, white, and blue plaque on the middle for the Sport Fury, which was the top of the line. Well, there was a VIP. I guess the VIP was technically the top of the line car. Sport Fury was the top of the line, you know, sports package car. Um, you got the cool trim and uh, I believe the, the vinyl side was added to this, um, but the stripes are original. I really like the pinstripe. It really breaks up the styling on this car. And this car is originally a 383 two barrel car. Here's a picture of the VIN. P is for uh, Plymouth C body. H is high trim level, Sport Fury. 27 is convertible. G is 383 two barrel. 9 is the year, uh, 1969. D is the plant, which is the Belvedere plant. And the 207444 is the sequence number of the VIN. You got the horn ring too, and the H arc player. Again, we'll get into that in a little bit. Let me show you the engine bay. So the standard engine on these was a 318. This one has the upgraded 382 barrel, which these are just great engines. Uh, I mean, you put a four barrel on one of these and it wakes them up a little bit, but a 382 barrel at 290 horsepower, tons of torque. These things just do great. Um, just effortless power on these things. Uh, two speed wipers on it, drum brakes. And then here's the fender tag. It's pretty plain tag. There's not much on it. Um, let me decode this for you. So E61 is 383 two barrel. D32 is automatic. That's the VIN which we just went over. Y3 is the color. And I can't remember the name of the color. I think it's canary yellow. I could be wrong about that. Daffodil yellow. I have to look that up. Uh, H9W. H is high. 6 is bucket seats. W is white. W1 is the upper door frame color. Uh, that is C20 is the SPD, which is December 20th, vehicle order number, C16 is console, C55 is buckets, M25 is a molding package, M31 is also moldings. That's the, the belt trim on top of the doors. R22 is a track. V3X is the top, which is a black convertible top. 
Y14 is sold car. END is end of codes. This thing has power steering, uh, just the 22 inch small radiator. No reason to get a bigger one on this one. No trailer towing, no AC or anything like that. But let's get into the story of this car. So imagine yourself back in 1969 and you're a young co-ed at the University of Washington and you enter a contest to be the Chrysler Plymouth Division College Queen of the Year. And you happen to win that contest because you're smart and beautiful. And the prize for the contest is you get any Chrysler Plymouth Division car you'd want. And the lucky winner was the owner of this car, Judy who is a super, super nice lady. She is awesome. I uh, love hanging out with her. And she won this car and she could choose any Chrysler Plymouth she wanted and she decided to get a 1969 Sport Fury convertible. And you know, we were discussing some of the weird, unusual options on this. And apparently she could get any car she wanted, but she had to pay for the options. And the one thing she really wanted on the car was an A-Track player. Because when you're in college, you want to have your tunes. Got dire straights in there, which is awesome. That's a good A truck. So apparently she had to pay extra for that one, but I'm pretty sure the rest of it was given to her. And we actually have the window sticker for this, which was from Goodfellow Chrysler Plymouth, which was uh, New University District in Seattle, Washington. And she's, you know, she won this car. I think it's really, really cool. It's just an awesome story. So I kind of call it the Beauty Queen car because it was like, you know, it was given to her as a prize back in the day and these are original king county plates on it and apparently and this thing has a bit of a bit of a story so she sold it in 1974 and i believe it was sold to somebody at state motors in olympia i gotta double check that with her but i'm pretty sure that's what happened it ended up in california for a while in san diego but she told him when he's when she sold the car to him that she wanted first chance to buy it back if he ever sold it and a few years later he got a hold of her and fortunately the the gentleman had cancer and ended up, he passed away from cancer and just gave it back to her and she's had it ever since. And, you know, they keep good care of it in their garage. And that's one of the reasons this thing was so well preserved. I mean, it's a super survivor car, original interior, original top. And it was preserved all these years because it was in a basement in San Diego and it's been a garage up here. Up in Washington and well taken care of all of its life. So now, now we get to the reason why it's over at my shop right now, getting some work done on it. Unfortunately, Judy and her husband were on vacation in Maui and someone broke into their house and stole a lot of stuff, including all three of their cars, uh, which was a Porsche 911 that apparently ended up in Belize, a new Lexus, and which ended up being at a chop shop, and this car. And apparently it ended up in Bonnie Lake which is just north of here, north of Olympia, south of Seattle. And apparently the person who stole it like was making it their personal car and was like driving it around and it got spotted and the police got involved and apparently there was automatic weapons and other such fun things. And, but luckily she was super lucky and got her car back, mostly in one piece. Um, the biggest thing that we have to fix here is they actually drilled out the ignition. So you can see all the metal shavings on the carpet here. So they actually drilled it out. We have the bottom piece off. We're going to replace it. We got to take it. We've got a new ignition switch for it. They're going to bring it onto a locksmith and get the key remade. Uh, fortunately, it's pretty easy to, to hot wire these on these cars. You just plug a new ignition switch in and you can run it. And then they, it's very dirty because it hasn't been cleaned up since. So actually, if you can see right here, they actually took fingerprints off of it. And that's like the remains of the fingerprint. So one of the things we're gonna do here is completely detail the car and get it all cleaned up again for her. So it's just back like new, just how she had it. So luckily they didn't do too much damage to it. We don't really see any damage. There's a couple of dings on some of the trim that we're gonna to try to get fixed. Um, but other than that, we basically have to fix the ignition switch. Apparently they put the top down weird. So we gotta get that fixed. That's why the window's down a little bit there to kind of fix that. But uh yeah, fortunately they didn't do too much damage to her baby because that would have been a shame because this car has a great history and it's just, I love this car. I mean, I'm a C-body guy. Judy's awesome. It has a great story. Like this thing just checks all the boxes for me. So, um, so yeah, I want to show you the, I'll show you a copy of the article here that uh, from the, the Seattle Times back in the day with Judy talking to Pat Goodfellow and then we'll decode the window sticker. 
And here's the newspaper article. It says, Campus Queen Selects Fury. Miss Judy Hill, Chrysler Plymouth Division College Queen of the Year, discusses her 1969 Sport Fury convertible with Pat Goodfellow, president of Goodfellow Chrysler Plymouth. Miss Judy Hill, 21, a senior at the University of Washington, has been selected Chrysler Plymouth Division College Queen of the Year. She was selected to reign for one year. Miss Hill was selected on the basis of scholarship, activities, and beauty in other activities. The Chrysler Pullman Division gave her the option of selecting any automobile in the model line, and she selected the 1969 Sport Fury Convertible. The car was presented to her on behalf of the division last week by Pat Goodfellow, president of Goodfellow Chrysler Plymouth. Judy Hill as ASUW Secretary and Majors in Business Administration. I, I'm kind of curious. Put in the comments what car you would have picked. And then here's another real nice glossy picture of her picking up the car. But I'm real curious what all of you would have picked. Me? Probably a Roadrunner. And here's the window sticker, or the Moroni label, as they call it. Um, it's pretty cool. Just a copy of it. So it says, uh, ship to Goodfellow Chrysler Plymouth on 4242 Roosevelt Well in Seattle, Washington. It's a uh, Plymouth Sport Fury with the H64 white bucket seat interior. B51 power brakes, 4295. C16 console. It's interesting. I actually don't see a price on that, which is interesting. Uh, D34 torque flight transmission. That's usually D32 on the fender tag. That was $216.20. Remember, three speed on the column was standard. Uh, D51, 271, 276 axle ratio. Axle ratio. E61 383 cubic inch engine that was 69.70 J55 undercoating and hood insulator pad 1650 I think kind of hard to read uh, the R22 eight track radio which she had to pay for herself was 196.25 S77 is power steering uh, was a hundred dollar even option V3X convertible top black V6X accent stripes black those are both standard. Y14 was sold car, and she got the upgraded U22 white wall tires, 825.15. That was $36. So the subtotal was 4162.70. The destination charge was 182. And the total MSRP was $4,344.70. Just went to start it and it has the Chrysler parts mats. How great is that? Everybody always wants to hear him running. We got the air cleaner off because it had been sitting for a little bit, so we wanted to look at the carburetor and make sure everything was going great. But this thing sounds fantastic. For our regular channel watchers, this one will not be doing donuts in the field. Just want to make that real clear right now. It's also been dry for a week, so we can actually drive back here right now. All right, I want to do a little driving video. This car drives so nice. You can just tell it's a low mile, you know, it hasn't really been messed with. 15,000 miles, I'm sure that's 115, but this thing was just super well taken care of. You know, super, super nice survivor. All right, turn around here. Oh, keep on grabbing for this. It's a console shift. It's down there, it's not on the column. You used to driving sea bodies, most of them are column shifts. You just kind of get used to it. It's got the 383 suspension, just kind of floats down the road. Even on grass like this, it's not super even, it just drives super nice. to start raining tomorrow so kind of want to get this out the gas in it's a couple years old so we want to burn some of that old gas out and put some you know ethanol free premium in it I was having a little problem starting when it was cold just because the gas doesn't have as much poop left as it used to you know the thing drives great all right thanks everybody for watching really appreciate it we're going to get this car back in tip-top shape and get it back to Judy soon. Hope everybody liked the video. If everybody has any comments on it, we'd love to hear. And thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.